He's the only player elected to the Hall of Fame this year. He's the 58th player to be elected in his first year of eligibility. When I say that he's the only player, that is very significant this year. Great moment for him, obviously, uh, in the Dominican Republic. That's uh, Pedro Martinez, his longtime teammate who was next to him. But these guys didn't get in, and now, at least through the traditional method, they won't get in. This was Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling and Sammy Sosa's last years on the ballot. And you see uh, Bonds and Clemens got reasonably close, Schilling a little less close. Sammy Sosa was never anywhere near getting in. So, obviously, this gets the guys who don't get in get about as much attention as the guys who do. Here's Robert Stanberry, only the third. Let's just start with Big Poppy. He gets in. There was the tangential connection to performance-enhancing drugs with him. So does it seem incongruent? Some fans might look at it and say, well, he gets in on the first ballot. These guys don't get in at all. Does it make sense? Yeah, of course. A lot of the rationale of the voters is like going through a logic pretzel and them trying to figure all this out. Clearly, some voters decided, well, there may have been a link, but I'm going to ignore that in a way that it didn't ignore uh, links to other players. And I do wonder, as we move forward, Greeny, the fact that David got in despite that 2009, 2000, uh, 2009 New York Times report, does that make it easier for his former teammate down the road, Manny Ramirez, to get in, for Alex Rodriguez to get in as well? Well, so that's good to A-Rod. He got just 34 percent of the vote in what was his first year on the ballot. So he has the benefit of a lot of time in front of him. But that's a very low place from which to start. What does that historically mean for a player like him? Yeah, his voting percentage is basically identical to that of Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens. And if he follows their trajectory, then he's not going to get in. But I do wonder... As some of the older voters drop off and the perspective begins to change and perhaps more accurately reflects the context of the times, if Alex will get more support. And keep in mind, Alex Rodriguez, as far as Major League Baseball is concerned, is a member of good standing. As far as the Hall of Fame is concerned, he's a member of good standing. It put Alex on the ballot in a way that it never put Pete Rose on the ballot. Yeah, that's right. And then, and Buster, you and I and Hembo, and I've got a Mad Dog Russo coming in today. We're going to do a long conversation about this on the radio today, but in condensed form. Uh, our friend Jeff Passan wrote a column yesterday saying, if Barry Bonds doesn't get in, it'll be a failure by the Hall of Fame. He didn't get in. Is it a failure? It is a failure, no question about it. Look, the Hall of Fame is a wonderful museum, but the credibility of the plaque room is now uh, affected forever. Because everybody in the industry knows there have already been PED users who've been honored at the Hall of Fame. And that is not reflected in the fact that you have the two greatest players who don't get voted in. And I'd say this, too. It's shocking that you have a group of journalists. It's not all the writers. It's a third of the writers who effectively allowed themselves to be deputized as retroactive morality police. It's time for the writers to stop making the news and instead focus I'm just reporting it. Okay, we will talk much more about this on the radio later today. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.